Anna Lind, oh, sorry, Joe Cox is back in the news. The report, linked below, that she was working on at the time of her death, The Cost of Doing Nothing, was published today. It is worthwhile considering for a moment who Joe Cox worked for. After Cambridge and the LSE, she worked as an advisor for Joan Wally, linked below, then went to Brussels as an advisor to Glynis Kinnick, then she worked for Oxfam and Saved the Children, and at off times she was an advisor to Bill and Melinda Gates and Sarah Brown, the wife of ex-Prime Minister Gordon Brown. Without going off down a rabbit hole, it is worth considering Sarah Brown is the ex-business partner of Julia Hobsbawm, and Miss Hobsbawm is the founder of Editorial Intelligence, link below, and was one of the dramatis personae in the McCann case, link below. Suffice to say that Mrs Cox was firmly networked within the structure of feminists with big ats. Which brings me back to the report for the policy exchange. Miss Cox's partner on the project was Tom Tugendhat. According to the Fountain of All Wisdom, Wikipedia, Tugendhat is the son of High Court Judge Sir Michael Tugendhat and the nephew of fellow Conservative politician Christopher Tugendhat, or Baron Tugendhat, as he is known to his friends. After attending St Paul's School, London, he studied theology at the University of Bristol before doing a Master's in Islamics at Gonville and Keys College, Cambridge, and learning Arabic in Yemen. And Tugendhat was commissioned into the Educational and Training Services branch of the Adjutant General Corps Territorial Army as a second lieutenant. He transferred to the Intelligence Corps. Blah, 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 blah. Tugendhat has seen service on operations during the Iraq War and war in Afghanistan. He later served as the military assistant to the chief of the defence staff. So, we can pretty safely assume he is a spy. Mr Tugendhat's partner in finishing the report is Alison McGovern MP, link below, who was Gordon Brown's parliamentary private secretary and was Shadow City Minister but resigned when Jeremy Corbyn became leader of the Labour Party and then further resigned from Labour's policy review on child poverty and combating inequality because Shadow Chancellor John MacDonald described Progress, link below, as an, organi an organisation of which she was the chair as having a hard right agenda. So... We have two Blairite MPs and an Army Intelligence Officer commissioned to produce a report intended to be published in July 2016 at the same time as the Chilcot report. Link below for the Policy Exchange Think Tank. I wonder what they will suggest. The headline is the rise of unthinking pacifism and knee-jerk isolationism in Britain has dangerous consequences for the safety of people around the world, according to a report started by Labour MP Joe Cox. Gosh, there's a surprise. The report then names various escapades that justify further military intervention, like everybody's favourite freedom fighters, the Kurds and the 1991 no-fly zone, as an example of what the Blair government used to call ethical foreign policy. However, when I think of those events, I am reminded of the stories of charity money going missing, linked below, and people stranded on hillsides because the whole thing was rather, well, a cock-up. Also, there is something rather odd in the timing of this report because elsewhere Theresa May is in America making precisely the opposite case that 
Britain shouldn't be mucking about in other people's countries. If you have your tinfoil hat handy, it is probably time to slip it on. Because if you cast your mind back to when this policy exchange document was commissioned, there was all the hoo-ha about the importance of intervening in Syria and how we owed it to the Syrian people to swoop in and bomb uh, save them. Add to that, this report was intended to appear at the same time as the Chilcot inquiry. Oh, and that the Brexit vote was supposed to be a victory for Remain. Right. Keep all those thoughts in your mind and hold on to your tin hats. Suppose that Joe Cox didn't conclude these things. Suppose she concluded after meeting the much publicised survivors from Darfur and Afghanistan mentioned in every story about this report that military intervention was not the correct path. Let's go back to the book Mrs Cox co-authored with Ed Cairns and consider what the blurb says. Many have failed to keep this promise. Governments must now make new efforts to take up the challenge in a rapidly changing multipolar world where China and the USA will be the superpowers and where India, the European Union, Brazil and others are gaining new global influence. Many people feel that there is little that can be done to prevent the brutal targeting of civilians that characterises modern warfare. They are wrong. Forgive me for being dense, and admittedly I haven't read the book, But that does not sound like a call for an end to unthinking pacifism and it does rather suggest there should be a little more knee-jerk isolationism, especially in an age of mercenary and proxy armies often camouflaged as terrorist organisations that are supposed enemies but being funded by the same people they are supposed to be fighting and all in the name of pipelines and drugs and money. Suppose Joe Cox tried to do a Dr Kelly. After all, the report is called The Cost of Doing Nothing.